Jim and Bobby Holt have released an interview on their own YouTube channel, which has changed my mind about the role the Holt family played in the Duggar story and in the journey of the IBLP. So here we go, friends. Any time I found that any organization that is willing to cover up things and not deal with crime and their church, and they're willing to cover that up, in my opinion, it's become a cult. I've talked about the Holt family on this channel in a couple of videos over the past few months. Bobby and Jim Holt were close friends of Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar. They attended the Duggar Home Church. They were involved in the IBLP. They allowed Josh Duggar to date with a purpose one of their daughters. And then they were exposed to Josh's inappropriate behavior. Here they are, appearing on one of the Duggars' many TLC series. That family of eight kids are the Holtz. Father Jim has known Jim Bob for years. I met Jim Bob Duggar. He and I grew up together. We went to Shiloh Christian High School together from seventh grade on. We were going to sell books together in Kansas, uh, Bibles and encyclopedias. The Holtz also share the Duggars' religious convictions. When the families get together, it's a chance for the kids and adults to relate to people who live life the way they do. Not an easy thing to find. Which leads us to a common question. How will the Duggars handle the delicate issue of dating? With lead son Josh, age 16, this issue is about to become more than theoretical. We have met others that um, there might be an interest among our children, you know, they spend time together, uh, never alone, for one thing, just boy and a girl alone. I, ideally, we're in groups, and they usually are together uh, with others when we're f visiting with, with friends and, and that sort of thing. And so, um, in that respect, it's a protection for their heart, too. I think I don't look at it as much as dating as I do looking for a lifelong partner. And I think that you can give your heart away to so many and I think that if you're gonna give your heart away you need to be giving it to someone who's gonna love you and care about you and not someone who's gonna simply get carried away with their emotions our goal is for each one of our children to find that special person just like I did and we really believe that God's created that person already for them the friendship that Duggars and Holt share extends beyond cookouts and skating parties <laughs> The two families compose the core of what amounts to a homegrown church. Every Sunday, the Duggar living room is transformed into a meeting hall. We just get together every week and we encourage each other and we pray together and study the Bible. And it's just a neat little fellowship. The service at the Duggars, and the home of the Duggars, the spirit is very sweet. And the whole church is like a big family. There have been times this small church meeting has swelled to over 100. One more reason to look forward to that new house. But long before the new house is complete, yet another Duggar will be added to the old one. But there has been a last minute change of heart. Not about the baby, but what to call him. Judah Benjamin has been replaced. This boy will be Jackson Levi. And the time to meet him is at hand. I think we're ready. Bobby Holt is the only family friend or family member to testify in a court of law about what happened with Josh Duggar so many years ago when he first SM'd his younger siblings. 
She testified and helped to put Josh away for 12 years. She did what many others were too scared or too weak to do. And I'm here to bring you new information Bobby and Jim Holt are finally sharing on their own YouTube channel. What does this interview spring out of? First, the Holts recently provided an interview to a YouTube channel called Sojo Files, where they addressed the Josh Jugger scandals. The first part of that interview is available on Sojo Files, but the second part has not yet been released. Meanwhile, if you're not aware, Jim Holt is a long-term, extremely active conservative politician. There are so many campaign ads I found that I could share with you from the past 20 years, and here is just a snippet of what's available on YouTube. history, which path are we going to take? Is it going to be a continued path on the road to socialism? Or is it going to be a continued path or back change the path back to the path of freedom? Is there is there room for compromise? Is there room for getting in there on, on certain issues and making things work? Because I mean, that, I guess compromise is the art of politics. Right, is what most people say. Right. I wish that you would have asked that in there because that's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, Are you tired of voting a good man into office and then he turns around and votes how the establishment wants him to instead of doing what's right? Well, I know I am. That's why I encouraged my husband, Jim Holt, to run for U.S. Senate. He's been a man who hasn't changed with the administration. He's voted conservative no matter who's in charge. He's been a consistent voice for we the people and not the party line. If you want someone who has voted against his own pay raise every time and has the best anti-tax, anti-growth in government record there is, someone who knows Obamacare is socialism and must be repealed, that life begins at conception and benefits should never be given to those who are here illegally, then Jim Holt is your man. Go to jimholt.us and check out his voting record and see for yourself that it's jimholt.us. This isn't rhetoric. It's a documented fact. It's time we take back our country for good instead of trusting it to just another politician. Remember, Jim Holt is not for sale. So vote Jim Holt for U.S. Senate this Tuesday, May 18th in the Republican primary. Thanks, son. I'm Jim Holt, and I approve this message. Paid for by Jim Holt for U.S. Senate. So, Jim expresses a lot of conservative and Christian values when he speaks publicly. I'm not here to talk about politics. It doesn't matter to me what the Holtz believe about how to run our government. We're all entitled to our own opinions, and I'd like to put those opinions on the shelf to look past any conservative versus liberal stuff and get down to what I find interesting about this interview. But it is important to note there was an election going on in Arkansas that Jim Holt seemed very interested in. He publicly endorsed one of the candidates, and he made a YouTube channel called The Rogue Republic, where he hosts kind of like a radio show, and he talks about his beliefs as well as the candidates he favors. The setup of the Rogue Republic show looks exactly like what Jim Bob and Bobby would eventually share on their own personal YouTube channel a couple weeks later. Around the middle of June, the Holtz quietly posted an interview on their personal page, and what they had to say was new, and I believe it's crucial to understanding more about what happened 22 years ago with Josh Duggar. Obviously, I encourage you to check out the actual interview on Bobby's page, but I want to recap some of what struck me about the video here. First off, in my opinion, the video was primarily made to allow the Holtz to talk about political candidates and issues they identify with hypocrisy and manipulation in government, but it led down a rabbit hole where they started discussing their lives and how they intersected with the Duggars. 
My other videos about Bobby have asked the question, is Bobby a hero or a villain in her own right for being involved with the Duggars and allowing Josh back into her home after some of his earliest behaviors? Likely, she's probably both or neither. That's really the conclusion I've come to. We've all done good, bad, valiant, weak, crazy, wrong, life-changing, earth-shattering things in our lives. We've all made mistakes. And who are we to judge someone like Bobby? She was an outsider in the Duggars' periphery. She was involved with them, but only partially, and she left at some point. In my video involving the Holtz, I question why people like Bobby Holt haven't spoken out specifically against the IBLP. I've started to feel like so many people who are around the Duggars in the past, they've all turned their disgust with Josh's actions around to blaming Jim Bob and Michelle alone without being willing to examine the IBLP doctrine that contributed so heavily to what happened with Josh. But this interview with Bobby made me feel differently. Here are some of the important points I walked away with from Jim and Bobby Holt's interview. First, the interview reveals a side of Bobby Holt that doesn't appear unwilling to interrupt or correct her husband. She's definitely not weak in her ability to speak for herself and intelligently discuss her opinions about the events, theology, and politics they discuss. Of course, I was happy to see that, but equally, Jim Holt seemed reasonably able to hold his own, and I got the feeling the marriage operates more like equals than I've been led to believe in the past about many marriages that surround the Duggars. So, this made me feel more confident in trusting Bobby's opinions about the events that happened many years ago. Secondly, Bobby makes one thing perfectly clear. She lets us know very pointedly that the Holtz attended a home church with the Duggars, but they state, and I've stated this before in my many other videos about the IBLP, that the home church is firmly separate from the IBLP. The IBLP is an organization centered in Christian homeschooling and kind of like self-help ideas for raising young people. So even though many people within the home church attended IBLP seminars and conferences, that didn't mean that it was all incorporated into the church, at least while the Holtz attended. The Holtz admitted to attending IBLP camps, conferences, and lectures from approximately 1998 to 2000. But the most interesting part of what Jim Holt talks about is why he chose to pull his kids out of the IBLP program. Essentially, Jim reports that he attendees about the righteousness of taking several years to quote-unquote work for the IBLP organization once they turn 18 instead of getting married. Essentially, Bill Gothard was telling the female attendees they should lean towards doing some ministry via the IBLP organization instead of immediately finding a husband. This bothered Jim. But Bobby chimes in with the point that one of the main reasons it bothered the family is because following the IBLP courses and quote-unquote working for the IBLP involved the family paying the organization a great deal of money over time to allow their kids to attend and quote-unquote work at the headquarters. Yes, you heard that right. According to the Holtz, even when you were working for the IBLP, the family was still paying into the organization, and Bobby states the kids were not getting a salary. So the sense I'm getting from Bobby and Jim in this interview is that they saw through what Gothard was doing in so much as they could deduce it was essentially a scam, like a ploy to get money. It was going to cost a pretty penny to raise kids to be IBLP holy, and Jim wasn't falling for that. He says they walked out of that IBLP conference and never looked back. Okay, so now we know 
that the Duggar family and many other families in the home church continued to attend the IBLP conferences. They actually increased their involvement, expanding to working and taking leadership roles in the organization, and they acted essentially as missionaries spreading the good word about the Gothard method for homeschooling. The halts appear to be truthfully proclaiming they were disinterested in the whole IBLP shenanigans at a very early stage. They go on to state that as they stayed in active friendship with the Duggar family, they started noticing and speaking out about issues they saw with Josh. They said they spoke out and they were essentially ostracized by many people in their community for it. Jim Halt goes so far as to say he feels they've been ostracized for 19 years and counting. The Halt said that many friends and even family members have made statements like. Some were like, they really didn't want us talking about issues or bringing up questions. They didn't want us to ask questions because it made other people question. And you start whispering and and making you oh you can't you can't believe them they're just jealous or, or they're, you can't. they're bitter mm-hmm. or they're bullies or they're not being very loving as christ would right. be um they're like well how can you say that you know these people are really pure and holy and and uh i remember when kaylee and josh broke up it was all over that our daughter kaylee was the one that was immoral and what did kaylee do that the, the duggars would break up with with uh with Kaylee. He was just and a was, child. He was just a minor. We're a curious you boy. Know, um <laughs> when you hear something like that, please stand up for the victims. And if you have been a victim or you know of someone that has been a victim, please don't hesitate to call the number that we're gonna put up on the screen. Um that that needs to stop. It has to stop. And we know that many years later, the Holt family was ready and willing to testify at a trial that never took place all the way back as early as 2006 regarding Josh Duggar. I'm sure we still don't know all the stories that the Holts could tell. So, I'm making this video because I've been on the fence about the Holts. I get that no one is perfect, myself included, but I was really questioning why they weren't speaking out more about the dangers of the IBLP. I think this interview really helped me to understand that the Holtz were only momentarily involved with the IBLP, and they had more interaction and involvement with the Duggar family, specifically as friends. I think in this interview, they do a good job of making it clear that they saw the IBLP as an organization that wasn't even worth their time or their money, making me feel like Bobby's role in the Duggar's life, specifically in Josh's life, was mostly as a close friend, maybe like an aunt. They were people who really knew and cared about the Duggars before they became famous, made millions of dollars, and sold their souls to the IBLP. I can't really expect Bobby to speak out about something she wasn't really even a part of. I guess she's speaking out about what she does know. That the Duggars were her friends. That they believe strongly in Christian values. And that influenced their lives heavily. But it's not the only reason they were a part of Josh's life. Again, the Holtz and Duggars both have a strong interest in conservative politics. In this situation, their religious affiliations or their political goals really means little to me when I think about Josh Duggar's case. My position mainly changed to one of feeling grateful that Bobby is strong enough to stand up and speak out as much as she can about what she knows. Lastly, through watching the entirety of the Holtz interview and looking at Jim's channel, I've realized that the Holtz have a lot to say about the Duggar's relationship to a certain Arkansas politician. And that, my friends, is leading me down yet another rabbit hole. Thank you for joining me tonight. I hope that you get some good sleep. But before you do, I hope you take some time to head down your own rabbit hole. For the Holtz, Father Jim has known Jim Bob for years. I met Jim Bob Duggar. He and I grew up together. We went to Shiloh Christian High School together from 7th grade on. We were going to sell books together in Kansas. Uh, Bibles and encyclopedias. The Holtz also share the Duggars' religious convictions. When the families get together, it's a chance for the kids and adults to relate to people who live life the way they do. 
not an easy thing to find. Which leads us to a common question. How will the Duggars handle the delicate issue of dating? With lead son Josh, age 16, this issue is about to become more than theoretical.